escape. Alright, so announced roughly two weeks ago. This has actually been rumored for a while now, but finally. Well, the Double Dragon series returns in a... What a surprising way, actually. This action beat-em-up retro brawler here is back with roguelike elements was promised every playthrough as a chance at a new action. And you can actually tag in with two of four starter characters who unlock up to 10 additional characters as you go. Double Dragon Gaiden over here, Rise of the Dragons, is said to be coming to PCs and all consoles, including Switch, in the third quarter of 2023. So, Toxic Crusaders is probably the closest to the late Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, in graphics and gameplay, actually coming from the same developers of the famous upcoming retro platformer Iron Meat. And despite having Iron Meat delivered the October this year, Toxic Crusader over here is scheduled to come out early next year. Here's a trailer, it's the first one in its action-packed colorful glory, the pixel designs, and about the seven characters you can actually choose from. Coming up behind that, we have just a quick pitch, an action-adventure beat-em-up and a tad hack and slasher. Well, first work of its publishers, developers here, a game called Amira. Amira is even a story-driven, you can say, action RPG, since there's hints of RPG elements in there, about a girl born in the middle of an Eastern fantasy world who finds by chance that her life is pre-written, like all of us. Amira is coming to PCs and consoles as well tomorrow. Available on Steam with a demo releasing fully for the same platform only on December 1st this year. Number 3 we have a Pizza Kit, a pretty stylish combat driven 2D beat em up as it's described by developers here, Kid Games by the way, set in a dark science fiction fantasy world with a 16 bit pixel art and heavily inspired by 90s anime graphical novels. Check it out. This game's mainly a brawler with a bit of a science fiction feel to it, like Stranger Things. out inspired by the first Streets of Rage game that came out maybe 25 years ago. We've got here Streets of Chaos, a brand new retro side scroller beat em up fighting game with pixel art similar to 16 bit console quality games. Highly based on Streets of Rage gameplay, Double Dragon, Final Fight, and a few other games. Like, the story is even somewhat familiar. Just take a look. Streets of Chaos over here is releasing for PCs and consoles as well later this year.
on Steam through a demo since a few months ago. Number 5, we have Underling Uprising. This is an action-packed beat-em-up with colorful, cartoony aesthetics where you play as the Underling is a group of experiments molded by an evil mad scientist seeking revenge on another doctor or scientist. I've only mentioned this game maybe once. The Underlings is coming to PCs only in the third quarter of 2023 and this is how it looks. <laughs> Number six, we have Maiden Cops. This is a beat em up classic arcade style action game where you get to choose among maiden cops or policemen. Tackle crime in a city called Maiden City and enjoy what developers are aiming for a premium level, pixel art, and a breathtaking soundtrack. It's technically Streets of Rage with a dash of the game where girls are fighting over their boyfriends. I can't remember the name, the pixel art. Just take a look. Game set to be coming to PCs in the final quarter of 2024. <laughs> Look guys, if you have ever had hands on and enjoyed the Double Dragon game, well, Fading Afternoon over here is basically Double Dragon over here with a dash of gunplay like the old Moby Dick game. This one's been around announced around the same time two years ago, is finally hitting towards PCs and Switch only by the middle of 2023. To accompany the good news, we got this. <laughs> In the depths of a penniless neighborhood, where hardship is rife, and social inequality calls for justice. Now look guys, coming as the first work of its developers, we have over here a comic style 3 player action brawler game called Dicey Crime with a K. This is a single and also multiplayer game with a campaign, survival mode and some other stuff to spend your time while you're in there. Dicey Crime is a PC exclusive and releasing by the end of the year, check it out, just got a new trailer for it too. Of the third world, discover the root of this chaos and join Krakinho in the fight against crime in cities like Sao Paulo. Tokyo. Rome. and many more. Join Krakinio in the fight for justice.
Next up, we have from the same developers of the famous Vargant, the company's next big beat em up game called Detained. This is actually an action RPG beat em up, open world, or technically exploration based game, sitting on Steam for a demo and said to be coming out for pieces only in about two months from now. Here's a trailer. Fallen City Brawl, however, number 10, is an arcade classic inspired by 80s and early 90s retro stuff, with an actual story about revenge pronounced through some intense side-scrolling pixel art action here. Fallen City Brawl is coming to PC, Switch, and other consoles as well in the final quarter of 2023. Uh. Uh. Sitting on edge only since almost seven months ago, still in development though, we have Garuda Emblem. This is a 2D free roam beat em up where not only you advance with beating enemies, but also when you talk to people, do various quests, solve mysteries as well. Here's a trailer a Garuda Emblem does support co op play and campaign, and that's all we know about the game and gameplay so far. It's coming to PCs, possibly by the end of the year. Thank Number 12, literally Splatterhouse from the old Sega or Super Nintendo era. Instead, you play here as some sort of Jason Voorhees character. We have a game called House of Pain. This is a brutal hack and slash platformer where you get to battle through hordes of twisted, mutated zombies whose guts just need exploring with chainsaws, axes, machetes, and even flamethrowers. So you can eventually figure out the story as you go. Take a look. This game is set to be released on December 2020. <laughs> Beat em up action on the high seas. I mean, who doesn't like that? We've got over here from an indie developer whose specialty is just making retro makeovers, a game called Buccaneers. Or Buccaneers? Uh, Buccaneers over here is quite a bit inspired by the Golden Axe franchise, where there's an actual story to the game and like four playable characters to choose from with their own unique abilities. Take a look at the trailer. If you're interested, the game is releasing in about a few months from now. Down in the Dark, on the other hand, announced maybe a few months ago, is a modern take on the beat em up genre where you go against a little bit more than just the usual hordes of enemies, and you actually play as a police detective who wakes up one day realizing the world is just dark and hopeless. So he decides to go out and fight gangs and criminals out in the streets of Manhattan. Take a look. This game is coming to PCs only and to out by the Nidier.
Hey, so I guess I should tell you a bit about myself. The name's Budi, and I got kicked out of my last school for fighting. No big deal, really. Other than my mom freaking out and threatening to kick my butt if the same thing happened at the school. All I'm trying to say is school is tough. But you gotta be tougher, you know? Coming from the same publishers of 9 Years of Shadow, at number 15 we have Troublemaker. Uh, Troublemaker is an action-adventure beat-em-up game about just high school where you play as a kid sent to one of Indonesia's finest high schools where you have to literally or desperately fight his way on the top of the gang for a bit of a piece of m whatever, I don't know. Just take a look. This game is available for PCs only since March this year. And if you've ever liked the idea of Rockstar's bully game, well, this is for you. Last but not least, for all consoles available as of almost last month, for the price of only two bucks, we have Skinny and Franco. This game is even playable through a demo on Steam and other stores. And for Switch, it came out way last week. In any case, the trailer game is actually a super violent, story heavy with an amazing gameplay. And if it were not for the graphics, I would say it's right up there with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. You're such a badass. 